Welcome to my honest review of Forza Motorsport. <coughs> this video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Forza Motorsport. Hey, hey. 23 what are we technically calling it now i am trying it out on my wheel for the first time and man oh man it's really different it's it's got a lot i mean for like if, uh, for example gran turismo you've got like a couple of things that you can change but the amount of settings that you can change in forza to have a very specific feeling of how you drive this is the first game that i felt force feedback from both braking and then like when you go around a corner as well you feel like the tires like resisting going around a corner you can feel it understeering and there are so many great things about this game that i wanted to talk about that there are so many things that are going on right now that is overshadowing the fact that this game is great I don't want to sit here and talk about blindly that this is the best racing game that's ever occurred because it isn't and there is a ton of work that this game needs to have before it's in a really good place but we can still take a look at the things that went well so first and foremost is obviously graphics. I mean, the game has had some great improvements over Forza Motorsport 7. The interesting thing though is I wouldn't necessarily put it at a similar level of Gran Turismo 7. The amount of optimization that Polyphony had done to get that game in such an amazing place Keep in mind, it still had a rough release, but I think that's just any AAA game at this point. Most games are having a struggle of realizing, hey, you know, we probably don't have to crunch as hard as we normally have done in the past to get games out on like a disc. Nowadays, it's like, release the game in whatever state we have it in and we'll just patch it later, which is part of the issue that I have with this game. I just, there is some very obvious game breaking bugs that need to be, that needed to be addressed. Like huge server instabilities and all that kind of fun stuff. And yeah, it just didn't happen. And for the life of me too, you would think that with how many units the Steam Deck had, sold that somebody somewhere had tested it out before release and yet and yet nothing happened so just odd so some things that I was going to make mention as well is that the audio of this game seems to be vastly improved of course because this game does have more than 500 cars there's still some cars out there that don't necessarily have the right engine sounds or just have a very weird variation of what they sound like in actuality. But I'm driving like a standard Porsche Cayman and it sounds so aggressive. And it sounds exactly like you would imagine a Porsche would sound like. In my mind, it's fantastic. Like the road noises and like going over the rumble strips and going over the grass and like the collisions. The collisions have a very deep like crunch sound to it and it's great and I love that about that. So the audio team definitely did a very good job and even like the, just the background music is, is wonderful as always. As far as some of the critiques that I found playing this so far the I honestly like the idea of the builders cup I really do the idea that they change 
like using credits to car points, which makes for a very interesting acronym. The idea that you have to level your car up by just racing it and then being able to allocate those points for certain parts. I, I like that idea. It's very different from what normal racing games have done in the past in this day and age. The issue then lies on the fact that the actual credits that we receive are basically pointless because you use them to purchase a car and then that's it. So many people have also noticed that if you want to upgrade a car fully to like level 50 for like engine swaps, you have to do that with every single car. And my critique would be, or my, my suggestion would be, so keep car points specific to the Builder's Cup. Make it so that you have to choose a stock car and then you use that specific car all the way through and upgrading with the uh, car points. Now for free play, make it so that you can use credits or car points. So if you upgrade a car, you can, or if you race a car a lot, you can use those car points that you've already acquired. Or if you want to use like a career car in free play mode, you can't, not a problem. But to ask the player to grind like 50 some odd levels for every single car, I understand where turn 10 is coming from because they want you to gain an appreciation for every single car that you work on. And are you going to collect all 500, 500 some odd cars? No, you're not. So for the 50 that you actually do collect and work on, there should be a little bit of a grind to it. Makes sense. The one thing that really irks me as well is that some other YouTubers, influencers, whatever you want to call them, have rightly pointed out it is called Forza Motorsport. And there is not a single set of events in Builder's Cup that revolves around race cars, even though the very first introduction mission after the Corvette E-Ray is the Cadillac WEC hypercar. And that's it. I mean, yes, the motorsports and race cars and all that are included in the game but they're more for like free play so like why put such a heavy emphasis on them if like we're not going to use them like it is the main cover car further critiques are the obvious proverbial built from the ground up <laughs> god where do i start with that so when it's built from the ground up, it's made with the understanding that you're using zero, and I mean zero, carryover from previous games. There's not a single thing that you're reusing. And yet, the rewind sound effects are identical. And the biggest offenders are reusing both customization parts and car models. When you take a look at, of course, Gran Turismo 7, you can tell that all the cars have been re-scanned almost by every iteration because there's new scanning technologies that now are more focused on collecting higher definition of polygons or at least recreating cars with higher definition of polygons in games. And yet, Turn 10 have the audacity to use that same Mitsubishi Evo model from what? Forza Motorsport 3? <laughs> it's just like, if you say built from the ground up at nauseum, Tell your marketing department to not show any of the reused assets. Otherwise, we're going to 
pick at it and call you a bunch of freaking liars. Because that's what you are. At least try to hide it. Just say that you just didn't want to rescan all the cars or couldn't or whatever. But don't say built from the ground up and then the very next frame show a car from 10, 20 years ago. I have a love-hate relationship with the AI. Because much like everything else in the game, it was stated that it was built from the ground up and that there are some obvious improvements. I'm not going to beat around the bush there. But when the creative director gets up on stage and says they are some of the most realistic AI, they will rarely make mistakes. And you can see it every now and again where it's like they, they occasionally push a little bit too hard, you know, that kind of stuff. But then when you get into race in the Builder's Cup, they're all over the place. They're not listening to the racing lines. They're crashing into you. It's like, is this, is this actually better? I don't know. However, from when I have raced against the AI and they haven't shot off into the distance, the racing, we need to take a step back because we're comparing against too many other games and comparing against our false expectations. If we compare against Forza Motorsport 7, the changes that this game has had over Forza Motorsport 7 are so obvious and so plentiful and so awesome. And that's just the end of the story because this game is definitely an improvement over Forza Motorsport 7. If I take a list of everything that everybody has an issue with, with this game over what Forza Motorsport 7 had, the only thing that makes this game worse off is like the server stability and like the game breaking bugs on release. But those two things are kind of synonymous with games being released in 2023. Like the physics are obviously better. The graphics in most cases, I'll admit, are definitely better. Absolutely, hands down. The color grading in some certain situations is very odd because it like looks very faded and the colors aren't very saturated. But I think we've just gotten used to like HDR and like every single video game being just an explosion of color and rainbows. I mean, take a look at Forza Horizon 5. That is so unrealistic. The colors are so saturated. And it's like, holy crap, did a kid draw this out of a coloring book? So there are attempts at making colors a little bit more muted, a little bit more realistic. I'm happy with. The one last kind of major critique that I had was part of giving the fans time to create false hopes, false expectations is when you give us release trailers that show plentiful foliage and mirror-like ray tracing to then come back like a year and a half later when the game finally is released and all of it is definitely lowered. Now I can understand that, you know, if a lot of the in-engine kind of footage was for PC and then you come out and you finally start optimizing for the console and go like, oh my God, this is not going to work. This is not stable and we're asking way too much of our consoles. That's one thing. So come out with a statement and say, hey, you may have noticed in some of our revealed trailers that it looks a lot different than it actually is. This is because we have to lower the quality to optimize for the consoles. But then come back and do 
and make that footage accurate to PC because the PCs can handle it. Or just say that we've gone in a different direction. But to have no statement, oh God. <laughs> but to have no statement and to give the fans kind of a silent treatment about it all. Like, really? You don't think we're not going to notice this kind of stuff? Really? Oh, man. These textures on that wall. Oops. Big oops. <laughs> so the one thing that I have to say about all of this is dealing with the Steam Deck and trying to get it to work there and reading all the comments in all the subreddits and all the echo chambers on YouTube about how bad this game is, this, that, the other thing made me kind of skew my perspective on the game because the experiences that everybody else has had is not necessarily reflective of, of the experience that I've had. I've played a lot of this game, ironically on keyboard, but I've actually played probably about 10 hours of this game now. And I kind of understand people's worries of the grinding. I've understood some people's potential issue with graphics. But the game, to me, drives well, plays well, and is really fun. I really enjoy this game. The th Why I was so frustrated with the Steam Deck thing is because every day since release, I've been on the forums, and I've been, like, following Valve developers on when they're going to announce Proton Fixes. Because I want to play this game on Steam Deck. I want to enjoy this game in different ways. Now that I've played this on wheel, I definitely have some practicing to do. But I'm not going to refund the game. I will admit that I did succumb to uh, a little bit of the FOMO, where a lot of content creators got it early so I went from the standard edition to the to the like super ultra deluxe edition where I could play a couple of days early which is why I was able to get the Windows 10 video out but the only times that I thought about refunding this game is when I've been in the echo chambers being like oh my god or you know maybe they're right maybe this is a pile of, you know steaming pile of junk and it's like if you take a step back, I've enjoyed this game. I haven't really had those game-breaking bugs. However, I haven't been on multiplayer where the servers have been very unstable by the sounds of it. And I'm okay with giving Turn 10 my money to say, hey, you know, I want to try this new game. And I'm not going to ask for it back because I know you guys could use the money for funding and to, I don't know, create more great a better version to continue the franchise further if you know what i mean well oh, and there goes the foot cam whoops <laughs> so moral of the story turn 10 you've been through hell and back six years of development is a struggle boss and you guys have got your work cut out for you to continue this forward to really optimize this this game and to work with Valve to get this working on the Steam Deck and all that kind of fun stuff. But you guys put out a decent game. I don't know if I would agree with the reviewers calling it like the best racing game ever or whatever, but it's a solid game. It really is. Like the graphics don't suck. The driving doesn't suck. The AI doesn't suck. I'm actually playing it right now, which means like the game isn't that broken. So no, it's this game's fully functional in my mind. And 
yes, there are some more optimizations that could be dealt with on PC and just in general, but it comes with time. And I'm okay with giving turn 10 some time. So sorry for making this a ramble fest of a video. My moral of the story is there's both good and bad sides of the game, but that's just about everything in the world. There's nothing that's perfectly, well, perfect. And there's nothing that's like completely horribly bad either. The truth of everything is that it's somewhere down the middle. I think that's the case with this game is it's somewhere down the middle. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've probably got some more Forza videos coming on up. I'm going to hope to God that eventually we can play this game on Steam Deck. Because if it doesn't work with Steam OS, I'm just going to go back to Windows and just keep doing it from there. So again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.